Good day everyone. I am Joseph of Digilitic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Deep Learning Mathematics. In this lesson, we will learn about matrix and tensors. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the concepts of matrix and tensors, relate tensors to matrix, and appreciate the roles of matrix and tensors in deep learning. In our last session, we talked about scalars and vectors. We learned that scalar is just a single number and tells something about magnitude like weight, distance, speed, mass, and time. We also learned that a vector denotes magnitude and direction, just like when we say 60 kilometers per hour to the east. We also noted that scalars and vectors are mainly relied upon as basis for some machine learning techniques like support vector machine. The link to lesson 2 is given in the description below. The colorful picture of today's lesson can be fully appreciated by bringing together scalar, vector, matrix, and tensor. So this illustration shows the unique identity of each one. So this is scalar, this is vector, this is matrix, and this is an example of a tensor. So as you could see, one needs the other to complete itself. So it seems like there is some kind of evolution. So that means that the higher hierarchy cannot exist without completing or complying with the rule of the lower one. So let's dissect this idea one by one. So, as what we have said, scalar is just a single number, nothing more and nothing less. As what we have also said, vector is an array of number. Each value in the array is actually a scalar. It means that a vector needs a scalar to build itself. So, just an additional information, a scalar can be a column, it can also be a row, as you could see here. This is a column, and then this is a row. Okay? So, now, we are going to focus on matrix and tensors, but we will mention scalar and vector to give proper definition to both concepts. So this is an example of a matrix. So let's define first what a matrix is. So matrix is a 2D array of numbers. So it means that it is identified by two indices instead of just one. Again, I would like to repeat that for emphasis. Matrix is a 2D array of numbers. So it means that it is identified by two indices instead of just one. So, what we have to take note of in the definition is that it is 2D and it has two indices. Okay, I think it is here. So it is 2D and then it is it has two indices. So 2D means two-dimensional, which means to construct a matrix, we need two dimensions. The first dimension is the row. It's like what we had this one. The first dimension is this, uh, is this a row. And the second dimension is a column dimension. So are you following? If you have some questions, you can just write your questions in the comment below so, so that we could discuss. So now it is very important to note that the row and the column are vectors. So this means that a matrix is made up of vectors. So remember? So I, I told you a while ago, or I, we have explained that a scale, uh, a vector can be a column, it can be a row. So, now, let's look at this example. This example. Okay, so before going further, let's first understand how matrix is written. So it is, it is written uppercase variable. So A, this is called matrix A, and A here, the name of the, mat the, the, the matrix 
is written uppercase with bold type face. This is the name of the matrix A. It is in uppercase, bold face form. So, if a real world or a real valued matrix A has a height of M, height of M, and a width of N, then we can say that matrix A is an element of R, M by N. So, what do you mean by this? So, M represents the rows. This is rows. Let me write. Okay. Rows. And then N is the column. Very easy. So now in our example, this is the row. A11, A12, then A21, then A22. So th we have two rows here. And our columns are A11, a21, then A12, then A22. So these are our columns. So we have two rows, then we have two columns. So this is the first dimension, sorry, the first dimension, and then we have the second dimension. So in short, we can call this one as, okay, because it is supposed to be bold face. So we're going to make it bold. Okay, A. Then the element of R in 2 by 2 matrix. So that is how it is written. So it means that it has two rows and it has two columns. So the next question is how are we going to identify each element of the matrix? So in this case, we have four elements. How are we going to identify that this matrix belongs to? I mean, this element belongs to the second value in the second column and the second row, and so on and so forth. So how are we going to do that? So we can identify its name in italic, but not in, but not in bold font. So this is in italic, but not in bold font. And the indices are listed with separating commas. Okay, so we have indices, 1 and 1, then these two numbers are separated by a comma, then this is the first value of the four elements in this matrix A. So, maybe you would ask me, so then what's the meaning of A11, what's the meaning of A12, what about A21 and A22? Okay, let's take A21. Okay, A21 here means the value in the second row because this means second uh, row and this means the value in the first column. Second row but in the first column. Okay, so this is A21. What about A22? This is the value in the second row in the second column. So it's 1, 2, second row. 1, 2, second column. Okay, A11 is very easy. It's, it's the value in the first row and in the first column. This is in the first row and in the second column. It's very easy. That's how to do that. So, we can also identify the vertical coordinate and horizontal coordinate. And how do we do that? Okay, okay so I think we need so we can identify the coordinate by doing this okay then comma and then colon so what's the meaning of this so this means or th this pertains to the horizontal cross section of a with vertical coordinate i okay so now what about this one how do we read or read this. What's the meaning of this? Okay, so it must be bold. Okay, what's the meaning of this? Okay, then we have comma and then I. Okay. So this one means 
that the vertical cross-section of A with horizontal coordinate I or the vertical cross-section of A, A matrix with horizontal coordinate I. Okay, you can actually change numbers. For example, if you would like to say A1, uh, then A colon comma 1. So, now let's go to tensors. Let's go back to this page. Okay, so let's define what tensor first is. So a tensor is an array of numbers arranged on a regular grid. So this is the most general term for all of the concepts because it is multidimensional. I take note of the word, it is multidimensional. Maybe you would ask me, why is it that a tensor is multidimensional? Well, the answer is this. It means that it can be a vector. It can be a vector. It can be a matrix. But of course, it can never be a scalar, depending on the number of indices. Okay, so this is an example of a matrix. Uh, sorry, uh, a vector, which is a tensor. And this is an example of a matrix, which is a tensor. Okay, we will go to this one later. Okay, this is actually a first order tensor and it has only one index. One index because it has only one column. Okay. Then, a second order tensor is a matrix. It has two indices. Okay, so for example, this one, it has two it has a column and it has a row so it has three columns it has two rows so it is uh, a tensor again because it has two indices a column and a row unlike this one it, it, it only has a column this is very easy what about this one what is this is this is this what Okay, remember that, okay, if you could notice that this has the same numbers with this, with this matrix. So what is this? So this is actually a third order tensor and it is the one with three indices. And what are these three indices? This is a column, it is a row, it is also an axis. So this is a higher order tensors. If a tensor has three or more indices, then it is called higher order tensors. So this is this is the tensor with three indices. The first is the row. The first index is the row. The second index is the column. And the last index is the axis, as you could see. Right? Their axis. So, we have already covered the basics of scalar, vectors, and tensors. So, we are going to go to the, the next level of difficulty in our next lesson. So, you would like to ask, what is this for? Tensors and matrices are not that really useful in all aspects of deep learning. They are used in certain algorithms, for example, convolutions, and other operations are commonly used when working with vectors and matrices. This is especially used for feature detection in images. So after all being said and done, let's try this. What is a matrix? What is a tensor? How is a matrix related to a tensor? How are they used in deep learning? Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.